Microsoft Loop is a new application that was just released by Microsoft. And it's almost like if OneNote and Microsoft Teams had a baby because it's really good. It also looks like an exact copy of Notion if you're familiar with that personal organizational tool. So in this video, we're gonna break down how I'm using Microsoft Loop to build a personal workspace and how I have the structure of it set up and why you would want certain workspaces separate and how to link to them and kind of some tips and tricks that I've discovered after using this app for a couple of weeks. So in order to get access to Microsoft Loop, you just have to download it from the Microsoft Store. So you just type in Microsoft Store, right? Click this and then type in Loop and just install it. Um, they also have a web version as well. You could just type in Microsoft Loop into Google search and just pull it up and sign in using your work credentials. But essentially it's gonna link exactly the same password and stuff as your other Microsoft applications. It's just a brand new app. So when you first get in, it might, it might shoot you into this get starting page. So which will look something like this. And it has, it's a little overwhelming. There's a lot of stuff in here. I recommend to get out of this and just click this loop part and just deleting this altogether. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete this. And then it, it might take a couple minutes to update. And then I have workspaces and this is how they have it broken out. How to think about a workspace is you have to think, okay, how can I group these items, right? So I have a YouTube channel and I have a Rao Labs, which is consulting. And that's what I do on the side. And so it's, they're different, right? There's gonna be different groups of people. I'm gonna be working with different people at my actual business than I am on my YouTube stuff. So that's how I kind of separate in my mind or if you are working on a project with a couple of people. So let's say you're at the same company and you're working on a very specific project, then create a workspace for that project. And then you can always archive it later. later. So what I recommend is kind of building out the chunks of different workspaces and then build a personal workspace. So this is how I would do it. Press that plus and then I type in Liz uh, personal, right? And I'll give it a little code icon, maybe me coding. So I'm gonna press continue. It's gonna guess, but I'm just gonna press create workspace because it sometimes will guess what items you wanna put in here, but I just like to start with a blank slate. Now what I do is I will set up the para method, which became popular by Tiago Forte, right? So I do exactly what he has written out in his book, The Second Brain. He also has a book called The Para Method, but I'm gonna do projects and I'm gonna add an icon, like a rocket. That's what I like to use for projects. I'm gonna add a new page. So if you didn't, if you missed that, it's this plus. You can add a new page or new link. I do new page. I start with pages, because that's like the foundation. I'm gonna do areas, and I'm gonna do a little growth emoji. And then I'm gonna do a new page, drag it down. And I'm gonna do, um, what is the other one? Resources. So. Let's do a little hammer for that one. And then new page, drag it down. And he has this as archive. And I'm just gonna use a file folder. Okay, so there's my para. Now everything needs to be grouped in here. And you could do sub pages, sub links, all that kind of stuff. So what I like to do is I will link or add a sub page, right? And let's call this like, as far as me personally, what my projects are, I do YouTube, I've got my business, I've got real work, so I would start with maybe um, Route Labs would be my business, right? And then I'll add another sub page. Let's drag it underneath here and let's call this uh, YouTube, right? So here's two main projects. And how I think about this is you actually are going to link directly to your other workspaces. So under projects, I have my two projects, Route Labs and YouTube. I had those as other workspaces, so I can link them directly to that workspace. Let me show you what I'm thinking. So if you go here, you can go to Microsoft Loop to see everything, or you can switch here. So if I go to Rao Labs, which I have sitting here, let's just say I wanna to link to this. Share page link, right? Access to this page alert, access to pages, this makes you send an email. I don't like that. I want this page link. And the reason I want this is because I'm gonna copy this link and I'm gonna paste it in my other workspace so that way I can just click it. Hello. Okay, so then I'm gonna go back. So 
Going back to here, I'm on Rao Labs. I want to link to my Rao Labs workspace. So if I just paste it, bam, loop. So what it looks like is when I want to look at Rao Labs stuff, I can just click this and then it changed me to Rao Labs. Okay, so let me go back and show you it again. I've got projects, right? And I can put some stuff in here and there's some templates down here. And then I'm going to link to Rao Labs, right? And so instead of having to go like this and I might have a million workspaces, I can just go bam. And now I'm in my Rao Labs workspace. I can look at my sales pipeline. I can look at my finance stuff and you're in a different workspace. I like to keep them separate because my personal workspace, I might have notes that I don't want other workspace members to see. So I would recommend doing one workspace with just you and then your other workspaces, you can add other people. So add more people in the Rao Labs section or in the YouTube section as well. So anyway, I know that's a lot. So <laughs> what you're gonna do is just have a para, right? And to give you some more ideas as well, I'll just go to the Rao Labs section. And this is just how I'm setting it up for my business. And again, think of it like Lego blocks. So we're in Rao Labs. I can add all my, all the members of my company, right? Under projects, I have my sales pipeline. This is a Kanban board. So how do you add stuff onto here? You're like, whoa, what's this? It's like, it's like Notion, if you've ever seen that software, but it's like Lego blocks. You can add words, you can add text, you can add Kanban boards. So when I'm in here, so let's just press enter and move down so I can get a cell. So see this, it says backslash to insert and then add to find. So what I can do is I can add backslash, table, checklist, bulleted list, date, call out code. There's so many different things that you can add. Quotes, um, Kanban board, right? And I would suggest just going through here and trying a bunch. And then there's even Microsoft app, GitHub, Planner, Trello. You can embed these things within here and, and they're gonna keep building it out and stuff. But that's how you do it. You just do backslash and then you click what you want. So in this case, here's my Kanban board. This is my sales pipeline. So for my business, I have basically jobs that I'm trying to get, prospect, negotiate, close, and then actually do them. This is how I track it. So I have a Kanban board and this is from the book Sales Simplified actually, um, gave me the columns and I'll show you kind of what the cards look like. So again, backslash Kanban board to get this. And then all I did was just change these names or you can add, um, if you go to the right, you can add additional columns like add group. So I have some stuff, some jobs I'm trying, or people I'm trying to prospect, right? I'm trying to, I'm trying to get those sales. And now we have proposal. That's like when I've sent them a proposal. Then if I'm in negotiation, talking about pricing and all that, then if I've won it, I've won these two jobs and then whether I'm done with them. So I may have won these jobs, but I'm not done with them, right? I haven't finished. I haven't gotten paid. I haven't finished out. I, there's a couple things I have to do before I can call it done. I also have graveyard, which I'll throw stuff into uh, because some projects die and then they come back. Like they come back like a, a year later and they say, hey, I have um, a pro, I have, I, I really want to do that project again. So I have that as well. So if we take a look inside the card, you can see I have a speaking event, the owner, last date, the stage, whether it was, you know, whether it's one or in negotiation and that kind of stuff, and then priority as well. So this comes from Sales Simplified. He likes to categorize it, whether it's large, growable, at risk, other. This one wasn't like the largest project I've ever done, but it was good. And then I like to do work type. Now I think, and you can add notes and other stuff in here as well. So what I like to do is, I like to add different stuff to the cards. So again, you can add a field and I added a label group and then you can kind of categorize from there. And then what you can do is once you have uh, added these categories, right? Like I added the work type, you can go to filter and you can say, okay, I want to filter by work type. I want to see all the projects that were speaking and then you apply and then you can see them all. So it's really great for filtering and all that. So that's a little bit about how you can use the Kanban board. You can use this as a task manager as well. So it doesn't have to be just sales. I just like to group things. I like to know what big projects I have coming up so I can kind of prep. And the cool thing is you can change this to a table. So if you go from board to table, 
all of a sudden you have a table view, right? And then you can even export this to Excel if you wanted to. So I'm just loving this idea. You could also share this as a component and then email it to somebody and they can actually go in and add things, right? So if you wanted somebody to manage this, you could create it as a component and then email it to them and it's live. So they can update it wherever and it will update. So it's that's the whole point of a component and I'll kind of go into that in a little bit. It's not super useful right now at the point at this point because it's just you're just trying to build out what you want. So again, you can add things like finance. I threw in my link to QuickBooks and to paste a link, you just do control V, just paste it in here. So it's, it's kind of fun. You can even add in like SOPs, like standard operating procedures, that kind of stuff. But let's go back to the personal one. But that's the whole idea is I'm in my personal workspace. I want to see all the projects I have going on. I've got my business, I've got YouTube. I might do one for actual real work, some links there. Um, so that's what I would recommend doing here. Areas, some places, some things that I like to add is add a new subpage. I like to add health. This is another good one. Again, we're focusing on personal, right? So you got your projects, personal, um, and you got, let's do like a heart. So heart, so we can do health and then you can link all your health stuff. So link your portals to your primary doctor, maybe your dentist stuff, maybe even your insurance, stuff like that. So areas are things that never end. You're always gonna be doing health. You can even add volunteer work, you can add health, you can add travel. Um, as well to areas. Resources, that's gonna be more um, things you wanna look for. So any uh, like tax stuff would be, a, would be an example. Any, anything you have to do for taxes would go into resources because it's like when it's tax season, then you have all your stuff. So you can link PDFs and that kind of stuff. And then archive, once you're done with a project, like let's say add a project and I'm redoing somebody's website. So let's just put this here, oops. Not there, let me pull this out. Let's call this website. So if I made a website for somebody and I put all the information in here and I had my Kanban board, Kanban board, it creates a fake, like a prep one. And I'll say I throw in a progress tracker and I'm, I'm having all this Lego blocks of my website. Once I'm done, I just dump that into archive. And then it's out of my main projects. It's just out of my, it's out of my hair, right? Like, I just don't wanna see it. So that's how I would use archive as well. So if we collapse all these, this is what it's gonna look like. And you have everything kind of at your disposal. Another thing that's really cool that you can do within a loop workspace is actually film a video directly inside. So you can click this record video and then all of a sudden it pulls up a video and you can allow it or block it and then it will save in your OneDrive. It's actually kind of insane. It says my camera's already in use obviously because I'm filming directly right now, but <laughs> it's very cool and I'll just close, but you can record your screen right away and then it will just paste it right in here. Um, I will say one of my favorite things about Microsoft Loop is the fact that it syncs with all your um, Excel spreadsheets, PowerPoints, all your Microsoft products, stream, that kind of stuff. And all you do is do this like at symbol. So if you do this at symbol, you can link to other loop pages directly. So I could link to my pipeline if I wanted to, or um, you can link to your payments or the hidden potential of teams. This is a, a PowerPoint that I did recently. And you can just kind of dig through here and you can link to people. So I can look within my organization and tag people and add them here. So there's so many different ways that you could organize and structure things. You can do this like, uh, it's like a hashtag and then you can type in your title or let's just call this heading one. And then you could do a double hashtag heading two and then a triple hashtag heading three. So you can start adding all this text and paragraphs and then link to things, insert things, add a divider, and you just start building out these pages. And again, it's like Lego blocks. You just build out stuff and you just keep adding to it. So yeah, I don't have everything completely built out yet, but you just build out one little section and you go, oh, you know, it'd be nice to have this little section too. And you just keep working through it like that. It's very simple, very easy to use. And I'm super excited because it's linked 
throughout all the Microsoft products so I can link everything that I'm doing within Microsoft. So hopefully this gives you a better understanding of how to actually build in loop, how to do some basic stuff, kind of showing you how I'm using it, how I'm structuring it, how I'm linking to other workspaces, those types of things, how to add people. And honestly, a lot of it's just playing around with it. So I will continue to use it. And as I build cool little sections within Microsoft Loop, I will just link them up here and in the description below and just kind of walk through other things that I'm building and post them on YouTube as well.